Muy buenas tardes. Hoy es sábado 16 de marzo del 2024. Y bueno, este, preparándonos para la próxima ida a la luna en el año 2025, recordando los 30 años del Apolo, ya van a ser 32, mejor dicho. Les voy a dejar, para variar un poco las noticias que siempre coloco, eh, un video cortesía de Spice eh, X donde van a ver el lanzamiento de este cohete, el más grande en la historia, de, y el más grande y el más rápido en la historia de la humanidad. Uh, Elon Musk lo hizo de nuevo, vean las espectaculares tomas, cómo reentra, porque es un cohete que va a ser reusable, y de verdad que cuatro minutos para incluso solo ver el paisaje de nuestra querida planeta Tierra. Espero que lo disfruten onboard videos and so we're hoping that the Starlink on board will let us just like we're seeing these videos now see through that plasma field by maintaining a continuous communication lock with the satellites on orbit through the wake that Starship leaves behind. Now this is only the second time that we're testing Starlink during re-entry so even though we do have these great visuals now Uh, don't be surprised if we manage to get some signal hiccups through. We're still learning about what that wake will actually look like in practice and whether we're able to get that live continuous high speed data during reentry. Yeah, that's right. And one of the really primary reasons we want to use Starlink is to just gather as much data as possible. It's been said the data is the payload on one of these flights. Uh, where we're just we're putting this flight hardware in a real flight environment, trying to learn about it as much as possible. Uh, Reentry is going to be a really critical phase of flight. Uh, we really want to know how the ship's going to perform, especially that heat shield, as we're going through the hypersonic reentry. So, if something were to go wrong during this reentry, we want as many paths as possible to collect that information, that data, just to again just continually feed back. Uh, into start the Starship program to make each flight more reliable, more successful. Acquisition single, Mauritius. Now, if Starship manages to make it all the way through re-entry, we'll collect valuable data on Starship flying through the Earth's atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, meaning uh, more than five, or at this point, will be more than five times the speed of sound. Now we're watching these live views, uh, HD views by the looks of it, thanks to Starlink. Uh, you can see that the flaps there on the ship might be actuating. Um, certainly some incredible uh, visions of planet Earth behind Starship. Now, uh, we've already validated Starship's ability to fly uh, and land at subsonic speeds. You might recall those suborbital flights from a few years ago, and we can see those flaps there. So getting data on aspects like heating and control while traveling way faster than we did before is going to be critical to eventually bringing Starships back from space for rapid reuse. So I mentioned those flaps, that's one of the things um, that, that enables Starship to help control itself and, and, and survive the heat of reentry, which like we said before, we're expecting that reentry to occur around T plus 49 minutes. Uh, so we're uh, pr getting pretty close here. And what you're seeing here, it looks like the vehicle is sort of moving back and forth. Part of what you're also seeing is one of the cameras, this onboard view that we have, is on the end of a flap. Starship has front flaps and, and rear flaps in the vehicle. Um, so we've got four of those. And, oh man, we can see the heating on those flaps as we're starting to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. This is where the Earth's atmosphere is doing the work to slow us down. Uh, Now, like we said, this plasma field wow. is, wow, what a view. We hope to maintain these views throughout. Starship is so big that we're hoping that the plasma field doesn't entirely blanket the entire vehicle. Right now, it is not. The Starlinks are still... brought to you by Starlink. <laughs> yeah, the Starlinks are still communicating and still uh, capturing the data and the video that we see here. 
I mean, Shiva, this is just absolutely incredible views. We've never seen anything like this before. This is the, the biggest flying object ever in space. <laughs> absolutely, Kate. And, and it's important to note with the ascent burn that we did was to get us to orbital velocities, even though we were on a nearly orbital trajectory. So the heating and the loads that Starship is going